In this video, we will look at using the command line version of CAD Processor on Linux. CAD Processor on Linux is distributed as an app image, which is a format of software distribution that's very portable and easy to use because it requires no prerequisites to be installed in your system and it works without installation. So to start, download the app image file of CAD Processor and save it in a convenient directory. I've saved it in my home directory right here. And all we need to do before we can use it is make it executable either through the file properties in your graphical file manager or by running the command chmod plus x and give it the file name. Then we just run it the same way we run any executable on Linux. And the first time it's going to complain that there is no valid license available and it will show us our composite ID, which is a special ID number that's unique to every device. You will need to send this to our team so they can generate a license for you that's tied to your hardware. I already have a license generated for me. It's in my documents directory. And here's what it looks like. So all we need to do uh, to register it, we just run cut processor again. And uh, just for convenience, I'm going to change into the directory where my license file is stored. And I will use the activate license command. With this file name to register it. Then we need to restart cat processor so that all the functionality loads up. This time it, te it tells us that the license is activated and to test th that all the required functionality is available, I'm going to create a model file using the API new command. It is successful, so the functionality is available. An alternative way to register cat processor is by setting the environment variable opencas license file and now we can run cat processor and it will find the license on the first launch now in order to test the functionality of cat processor on Linux I'm going to put this test model on my Linux system and uh, try some operations on it and here's our model so let's load it into CAD processor and see what we can do with it. I'll start by creating a new model object. And then just for convenience, I'll change into my home directory so it's easier to work with file names. Okay. Um, I remember that that model has quite a few holes in it, so I'm thinking as a test I'll try to detect and remove those holes and then save the model as a mesh format. And to start I'll run canonical recognition, canonical shape recognition on the model just to make sure that all holes will be detected correctly. Okay, next I'm going to form a list with all the holes and to detect the holes I'll use the API detect general holes command. the list is ready and now all that's left to do is just to fit this list to a feature suppression command to get rid of all the holes. Alright and uh, let's save this model as GLTF. Check. Yep, here's the GLTF file, and uh, 
just so I can view it on this same system, I'm going to import it into Blender. Import GLTF. And there we go. And it looks exactly how I expected it would look based on what I did with it, with all the hole removal. So I'd call it a success. By the way, in case you are wondering how to go about learning what commands exist and how they are used, there are a few ways to do that. Firstly, on the command line itself, you can always use the help command. On its own, this command will simply produce a list of all available command names, but it can also be used with a specific command name. To see a reference on that command describing how it works, what arguments it takes and what it returns. Also, this command, help command, can be used with a wildcard. For instance, all cat processor specific commands start with API underscore, so we could use it like this to output a reference for all commands at once. Also, in the GUI version of cat processor, the code editor contains a built in command reference in this side panel. And as you type command names, you will get this auto-completion list, which is also accompanied by tooltips containing the same reference. And finally, the user manual for CAD processor also contains command reference in the chapters dedicated to specific tools that uh, correspond to those commands. And the commands are also complete with script examples. A few words on using CAD processor remotely from Windows Workstation. Currently there is a limitation in CAD processor which requires a working X server in order for CAD processor to start. That limitation is temporary. Uh, there are plans to remove it in future versions, so if you are watching this video a while after it was made, chances are this limitation no longer exists. But for now, we will look at uh, connecting and working remotely with CAD processor from a Windows workstation using PuTTY as uh, the SSH client and Xming as the X server. So first I'm gonna make sure Xming is running. And then in PuTTY, we will, uh, the only, really the only setting we need to change is under connection, SSH X11, we need to enable X11 forwarding. And then I'm going to specify the host IP address and connect. And here's our familiar home directory from before. I'll start cat processor. And it starts. And I'm just going to try and run some commands just to make sure everything's working. Just load the same model I already loaded before. And everything appears to work. And of course, sitting in an interactive TCL shell, typing commands one by one like we did earlier is not very productive. And the way cat processor on the command line is ultimately meant to be used is by executing ready scripts on files or batches of files. And the best way to make or prototype those scripts is to use the visual code editor in cat processor GUI because of the built-in reference auto completion and other quality of life features it has, plus you can view the results of your commands immediately in the model view. So I have come up with this demo script. Feel free to pause the video and look at it, but without going into too much detail, what it does is it looks for files of certain types inside a certain input directory and uh, it processes each of them in a certain way and then it saves each of them into an output directory inside that input directory as step. I'm going to bring this file to the Linux machine and run it there. I have set up a Samba server on the Linux machine for the sake of convenient file exchange with Windows. I've created this shared folder, models. It's in the root of the Linux file system. 
I've put some test models into it. I'm going to put this script alongside them into this same directory and run it from there and see what it does with these models. Uh, before I do that, however, I need to correct the input directory because I was using that one for testing and it's not going to work on Linux. There we go. So we have this remote session from before with cat processor running. I'm going to change into the models shared directory. Here's our script. And to execute it, I'm going to use the source command. And it goes through all the files finished and here's the output directory with all the processed files and this concludes our tour of cat processor command line on Linux I hope this video was useful if you have questions remaining please don't hesitate to contact us and have a great day